Today, we're talking about trusting in God and heading to the farm. Today we're talking about trust in God. And when you're trusting in God, what does it feel like on the inside? It feels peaceful. Even when you're unsure of what might be happening, you just know that it's going to be okay because God's got you. This reminds me of a story and it has to do with someone in a boat. So let's draw a boat. Let's see, we'll make a line and there's one end of the boat and another end. Have you ever been on a boat ride? I really like boat rides, especially early in the morning around sunrise or later at night because it's so peaceful. Oh, it's just perfect and seeing the water just like glass really still seeing some of the fish jump and the birds come down and swoop and eat bugs <laughs> it just fills my heart with peace but there's a story in the bible where it was not peaceful on a boat in fact there were really big waves and in the bible story it says that the waves were so big, oh, I didn't even make them high enough. It says that they were so big that the boat was getting swamped by water. I have to make a big wave maybe over here. <laughs> Just water everywhere. And this boat is gonna have a little sail. So let's give it that. There we go. And inside of the boat, there were a few men as scared as could be. They're like, ah, we're gonna die. Oh man, they were so scared. <laughs> and do you know who these men were? They were the disciples. <laughs> they were crossing the lake with Jesus. And so the disciples were super scared. They're like, ah, we're gonna die. And do you know what Jesus was doing? He was sleeping. <laughs> oh, I could put some Z's up here. <laughs> They were so, so scared and the waves were coming in and the boat was filling up with water and they thought they were going to die and Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> and a lot of times the inside of us can be like the outside. So if the outside's nice and calm and peaceful and it's a calm lake and the sunset, we're like, ah, God is good. Everything is all right. I am enjoying this moment. But a lot of times if the waves pick up and it gets stormy, we go, ah! <laughs> Just like the disciples. But Jesus, he was sleeping because he had peace on the inside of him. And it wasn't coming from the outside in, it was coming from the inside out. And the disciples woke him up Jesus said to the storm, quiet, be still. And it all went still. And because Jesus was full of trust in God and had peace on the inside of him, he could put that peace out. And that's what God wants. He doesn't want us to be full of peace or full of fear, depending on what's happening around us. That's what people who don't trust in God act like. He wants us to have his peace and to trust in him on the inside. And when we're like that, we can come into any place 
even a crazy storm and say, be still, quiet, and it'll just become peace. <laughs> oh, I love Jesus. This reminds me of another story where there was a man who wrote a famous song about trusting in God. And he had a tragic thing happen to him with a boat. And it was on a boat that he wrote the song that people have been singing for over a hundred years about trusting in God, no matter what. Let's look at that story now. We've got popsicle sticks. We've got markers. We've got googly eyes <laughs> and glue sticks. <laughs> because we're gonna share a story with you that happened about a hundred years ago. That's a long time, isn't it? It's about a man called Horatio Spafford, and he wrote a really famous song that people sing nowadays, and it helps a lot of people get through tough times. But before we do the skit, I have to create all of the characters. And I think we're gonna build a ship and some other stuff as well. And then we'll have lots of fun playing it out. Okay, so I've got Horatio. He's our main character. And then there was Anna, and they had four daughters. So one, two, three, four. And then they went to see a friend called Dwight Moody. So I'll create one for him as well. And then I'm gonna use a bunch of popsicle sticks for a, a boat, maybe two boats, and maybe a building. We'll see. I think we need a building as well. Whew, there's a lot here. Okay, I better get started making these. <laughs> Okay, so this is a boat, which is a steamboat, which means it had an engine. And this is where the steam would come out. I forgot to mention earlier that we have two boats. One is a steamboat, and then this boat, I'm gonna put a paper sail on. It's a sailing ship. So it went over the ocean with the wind. It was And then this is one of Horatio Spafford's buildings in Chicago that just happened to be a candy store. And I'll put in some details with paper as well. And we have Horatio and his family and Dwight Moody. And I think we have almost everything that we need for this skit. Okay, let's go into the skit. Once there was a man named Horatio Spafford. Horatio! He was an elder in his church. Does that mean I'm old? No, no. it means that you pastored people in your church. Awesome! And he was a lawyer. Lawyer! And not just any lawyer. He was a partner in his firm, which meant that he was doing really, really well. Woohoo! He also owned buildings around the north side of Chicago. That's the candy store. Lollipop, anyone? <laughs> he was also married to a beautiful woman called Anna. Anna! They also had four beautiful girls. My daughters! Aren't they beautiful? Yes! Horatio was doing really, really well. He had a great career. He was an elder at his church. Lots of people loved him and their family loved God. He had kids, a beautiful wife, and they had investments in buildings around Chicago. Who could ask for more? Yay! Yay! Happy days! One year, there was a fire in Chicago and it burned down a big part of the city, including of many of Horatio's buildings. Yay! Fire! 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 Building down! Fire! 
Horatio was really sad because they lost a lot of money in that fire. Sadness. I didn't even get to make a s'more in that fire. There was another man named Dwight Moody. Hi! He also loved Jesus. I love Jesus. He went all around the country telling people about Jesus. Jesus rocks! Hey, he was... hey, you over there! Jesus rocks! Hey, hey, hey! Jesus is awesome! He was what they called an evangelist. Woohoo! Evangelist, evangelist. I am an evangelist! Now Horatio, Anna, and his family supported Dwight, which means that they gave him money. Ooh, would you like some money? Oh, yes, please! They helped Dwight pay for things as he went all around the country telling people about Jesus. Two years after the Great Fire, they were going to go see Dwight Moody tell people about Jesus in Europe and go on vacation. But Horatio had to stay behind because of business. They rode a steamboat on the way there. But as they were crossing the Atlantic Ocean, a sail ship came and crashed into them. Anna and Horatio's four beautiful girls died. But Anna just barely survived. Now Anna was in Europe and Horatio was going to see her. So he took a boat across the ocean. And as he was crossing the same ocean that his girls died in, his heart was moved to write a famous song called It Is Well With My Soul. In that song, he talks all about how we can trust in God and God is our peace through the good times where we're having fun and through the really hard times where we're really struggling. His girls just died. But he wrote a song talking about how it is a well with his heart because he knew that God was his salvation. He knew that his girls were with God and that he was going to be with God when he died and he would see them again. God is so good. I just, I, I just have to sing. It is well, it is well with my soul. For the last hundred years, people who've been going through really hard times have taken comfort in that song, knowing that they can trust God through the good times and the hard. What an incredible story! Horatio Spafford's trust in God has inspired people for over a hundred years when they're going through hard times. And his song, It Is Well In My Soul, has been sung with people and gotten them through hard times for over a hundred years. Wow. But I know a song that's even more popular and that has been helping people to trust in God through hard times for even longer. It's a song that's been helping people for hundreds, even thousands of years. Do you know what it is? Psalm 23. And it was written by King David. It's a really, really famous song. So you might have already heard about it. And I'm going to draw what it's about. And we'll see if you can guess. It's going to be an animal. See if you can guess what animal this is. It's a sheep! And the first line goes, God, you are my shepherd. And shepherds take care of sheep. And it, the song is talking about God taking care of us like a shepherd takes care of the sheep. I'll grab a children's Bible so we can read it. This is Psalms 23 in the Jesus Storybook Bible. It says, God is my shepherd and I am his little lamb. He feeds me. He guides me. He looks after me. I have everything that I need. Inside my heart is very quiet as quiet as lying still in the soft green grass, in a meadow by the stream. And even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. 
He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. Wow! And King David is a really good shepherd. Because in the Bible it says they fought off a lion and he fought off a bear that were trying to get to his sheep. Wow! He risked his life and he protected those sheep and he really cared for them. Nowadays we don't see too many shepherds, but who do we know that takes care of animals? There's a few of them, but one that I'm thinking of is a farmer. And I know somewhere where there's a farm with some sheep. Let's go check it out. Hi guys, I'm just about to head into the Wells Fargo farm and it's starting to snow, which I'm super excited about because I love Christmas and we're just getting into the holidays and this makes me think of Christmas. But I really hope that those animals have barns or somewhere to stay in because it's starting to get cold and there's a lot of snow coming down. <laughs> okay, let's go check it out. So here we are at the farm. There's the barn and uh, there's all sorts of animals here. I haven't taken a look yet, so I'm excited to see what we will find. I'm hoping to see a horse and, oh, maybe some pigs and some cows and I really, really want to see a sheep. Oh, so let's go check it out. You guys, this is exciting. Uh, just when I was getting in, I, I saw some wild turkeys. Uh, let's see if we can get up and take a good look at them. <laughs> oh wow, look at him. I think, I think he saw me coming towards him. I don't think that they like that. Oh, there they go running away. Wow, that turkey's actually pretty quick. Okay, I'll see if we get a closer look as we look around the farm. Wow, look at this beautiful horse. It's so pretty. <laughs> Especially with the snowfall. Oh, and there's some horses right beside me. Right over here. Oh, those guys look like they've got some good muscles to work with. Oh, what a beautiful horse. Wow. She's coming this way. Wow, look at that horse. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh, do you think she likes the camera? <laughs> wow. Oh, beautiful. Hi. Oh, I love this. Oh, they're really well taken care of here. I love horses. I love that for hundreds of years, they've been helping farmers on the farm. For thousands of years, they were helping people get around before cars or airplanes were invented. And they've just been such a help to people. <laughs> and they're beautiful. Wow. I can't believe we're this close. I love this. Oh, thank you, God. This horse just came right over to be filmed. <laughs> Do you like the camera? <laughs> just wanted to say hi. I think the horse might have thought that I had food. Oh, and here comes a friend. Are you checking out to see if we have food too? <laughs> or did you just come for the camera? <laughs> oh, look at how pretty this one is. Oh, those white spots are just beautiful. <laughs> I've gotten to ride a horse a few times and I love it. If you look over there, they've got food. They've got somewhere to stay in from the snow. If they start to get cold, if it starts to snow really hard. Um, a beautiful enclosure where they're protected. They're really, really well taken care of here. That's full of food for the horses. Or they can eat anytime they get hungry. Oh, is that horse coming over too? I think so. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, this horse looks really friendly. 
How are you doing? Beautiful. Hi. Oh, you are a beautiful horse. I'm sorry, I don't have any food for you. Okay, well, I think I'll let these horses graze and let's go check out some other animals. I found a bunch of sheep. Now they're inside and I can't go in to see them. So we see them from ways away. There they are. Hi guys. <laughs> Look at them. Wow, they've got good coats of wool on for the winter. That'll help keep them nice and warm. So they've got this great little barn to go in during the cold days. And they've got that great coat of wool that God gave them to keep them warm. I think their wool is probably even warmer than my winter coat. Hey, let's go over here. I saw a couple of sheep over here. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> Just chowing down, enjoy being in that warm barn of theirs, <laughs> in their warm wool coats. Yup, they look happy. Look at them, they're just completely enjoying this weather, not having to worry at all about it. I wonder if this sheep's enjoying the snow. This one looks like it's just hanging out here. Ah, soaking in the holidays. <laughs> I don't think that sheep's cold at all. My hands are starting to get really cold, but that sheep's just warm and happy. These guys are really fun, but let's go see who else is here. Oh, so we're heading into the barn where these cows just got a snack. <laughs> Hi. And these are milking cows, so they get milked here. Wow, and they were born here too. Oh, they're so fun. <laughs> oh, those cows were so fun. And I think I found out where the goats are hiding. Let's check them out. Okay, so right in here. And I think that they're right over on this side. Hi, guys. <laughs> Oh, they, oh, there's some really cute ones over there. Look at them. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. There's just some little ones. Hi, guys. Wow. And then right beside them is the sheep that we saw earlier. There's the sheep. This is the inside. Hi. Oh, look at they have all that hay for chowing down. <laughs> it's actually nice and warm. I'm just barely inside and it's nice and warm in here. <laughs> the birds like it in here too. Do you see them? Right up top. It's much nicer in here than it is outside. <laughs> And here are the pigs. He's not interested in me. He's just interested in his food. <laughs> oh, these guys are so big. These mamas, look at them. Wow. Oh, I could hear the bow the whole time I was looking at the pigs and the goats. Let's go see if we can hear him over here. He's got a really strong fence around him. I think that that's probably to keep him in. Cause he's a strong one. <laughs> wow. And look over here. He's got all his food and his shelter over there. I wonder if he'll call out for us. Oh, he's wondering if I have food. Hi. I don't have food. 
<laughs> but you're a handsome one. <laughs> oh, he's great. Look at him. Hi. I know there's not many people coming to see you today, but we're here. You got one more shout in you? Oh, there you go. Wow, he's so loud. You can hear him all around the farm. Let's see if he'll give us one more. What do you think, lizard? You want to say hi one more time? <laughs> oh, that one was a lot quieter. So much to say. Are you telling us a story? <laughs> Thanks for saying hi, Blizzard. And it's lunchtime. Food! I think this must be the goat's favorite time of day. <laughs> Look at them go at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. The goat with the horns is called a billy goat. He's the male goat. And the girls taking care of the goats said that he's a little grumpy. <laughs> he tends to boss the other goats around. But he's there to be a daddy. Here's the sheep. They are loving lunchtime too. And that sheep with the horns is called a ram. And he's there to be daddy as well. Right now is breeding season because they want the mamas to have their babies in the spring. And every spring, they shave off their thick coats of wool. Because if they didn't take them off every year, there would be so much wool that it would even be hard for the sheep. What a beautiful coat to keep you warm in the winter. They could withstand the cold Minnesota winters, but it's much nicer to spend the winter in the barn. Bye guys! <laughs> Thanks for saying hi! That was so much fun! <laughs> we got to see so many great animals. Oh, which ones were your favorite? I don't know which ones were my favorite. I really like the sheep. I think that they look so friendly and I want to give them a really big hug. <laughs> I think it'd be so warm. Like, it's really, really cold out here, but none of them looked like they were suffering because they were made to withstand this weather and they have nice warm shelters and they're all being given lots of food and they were getting taken care of so well. Thank you guys for hanging out and checking out the farm with me. <laughs> Weren't seeing all those animals really fun? And I got to talk to the girls who were taking care of them. And you can tell that they love those animals a lot. And I really, really like the sheep. Those sheep were being taken care of in a building. But back in King David's day, they used to take care of their sheep out in the fields. And the shepherds would have what's called a shepherd's staff. It'd be a long stick with a curve on the end like this. Just like that. And the shepherd would walk with a shepherd's staff. And it has a hook on the end because of a couple of reasons. If an animal came up to steal a sheep, the shepherd could use the staff to fight them away. Or if a sheep was going the wrong way, the shepherd could kind of hook the sheep and say, no, come over here. <laughs> or if a sheep fell down 
in a nook or a crevice or needed help getting up, the shepherd could use the hook to get the sheep up as well. So a shepherd's staff was really important. I got this paper so that we can make one. So I'm going to go ahead and try and make a paper shepherd's staff. <laughs> there, there's our shepherd staff. But the shepherds had them much taller, much bigger. And theirs was made out of wood because this one would not do much if I tried to attack an animal or if I tried to hook a sheep with it. <laughs> but in David's song, Psalm 23, he says that God's shepherd staff and rod comfort him. And David's using a picture saying that he knows that God's going to take care of us always. He's going to protect us. He's going to bring us into the places we're supposed to go. If we're heading away <laughs> or if we're stuck and we need help, he's going to get us. And that's our comfort, knowing that God is our good, good daddy. And sometimes it might not feel great. Like if the sheep is like, ooh, I like it over there and goes wandering off. Like the shepherd's not just going to let it wander off. He's going to go get the sheep. And sometimes the sheep might be like, bah. <laughs> the sheep might not want it. And sometimes God does things for our good. And we're like, ugh, I didn't really want that. <laughs> but God knows what's best for us. And he is such a good father that he's going to do things for us that are good for us, even if we don't necessarily want them. So we can trust in God. We can trust in him in the dark, scary, lonely places like Psalm 23 was saying. We can trust him in the storm like Jesus was sleeping in the storm. We can trust him when our lives feel like they're falling apart. Like when Horatio's daughters died and his buildings burned up. And he probably felt like he didn't have anything left but God. But he knew God's salvation. And he trusted in God. He knew that he would see his daughters again. And he knew that his life was going to be okay. Because God was going to take care of him. And that is amazing. And that is what trusting God is all about. Okay, let's really quickly pray. God. Thank you for being my good, good daddy. Thank you for being my shepherd and taking care of me always. You always give me everything that I need. You're always with me. You love me no matter what. And your goodness surrounds me every day. Thank you so much. Amen. Oh, <laughs> I just love remembering what a good father God is and connecting with him and praying with him. Thank you so much for hanging out with me as we did our skit, for going to the farm, and for talking about how good God is and how much we can trust him, how we can have peace on the inside of us all the time. I hope to see you really, really soon. Bye!